and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation today is based on the signs of Christ's return. You will see that this world captivates the sinner in unbelief, but the Lord Jesus rescues and saves by taking you captive unto eternal life. Again the Savior teaches, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things, and stand before the Son of Man. So far the text, let us pray. Lord Jesus, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. In 1973, a man on prison release entered a bank in Stockholm, Sweden, and armed with a machine gun, held four employees hostage for nearly a week. It was a terrifying standoff, especially for Sweden, not a country especially known for violent acts. The entire nation watched as the drama unfolded on television and radio with reports broadcasting death threats and blood-curdling screams. <clears throat> the police tried to assuage the crisis best they could, meeting several of the captor's demands. But when he demanded he'd only leave if he could take all his hostages along with him, the police had had enough. Went stealth and drilled holes into the building from the surrounding structures to launch a silent tear gas attack. Only then did the gunmen surrender. But the drama did not end. Those news reports, which had so captivated all of Sweden, they took a turn for the bizarre, as the former hostages began defending, praising their captor. How friendly he was, how caring, how misunderstood by the police, the press, by everyone who had tried to help. Those previous reports and recordings of death threats and blood-curdling screams, they were true. There had been no fake news going on. These conflicting reports after the fact were a distortion of the mind. One hostage admitted he had been threatened, but went on to explain how kind it was for that gunman to threaten only to shoot him in the leg instead of killing him outright. Another, a woman who suffered from claustrophobia, said how gracious it was that she was allowed to go for daily walks outside the bank vault where they had been kept, of course, with a rope tied about her, understandably so, so she couldn't escape. How nobody outside that Stockholm bank understood the true threat was the police that their real fear had been they might get hurt from the police doing something senseless and rash. For some time to come, 
These hostages repeated the same in television interviews, spoke in court on their captor's defense, helped raise funds for his legal fees. You can imagine this aftermath was as shocking as the standoff itself. How could they think this way? Well, it's the same distortion of the mind that lies beneath kidnapped children who quickly come to accept their abductors as new parents and their horrifying new life a new normal. It's why some stay in abusive relationships claiming they love me. A bewildering psychological condition which, on account of that high-profile standoff years ago, has come to be known as Stockholm Syndrome. This Stockholm Syndrome is incomprehensible to the outsider. Unthinkable to you. But it becomes their reality, albeit a sick and distorted one, becomes our reality when you face an inescapable situation so overwhelming, so much to try and process, that you don't. The mind, in a way, simply shuts down, gives up. You know, this isn't so bad. The same faulty thinking with which, in one form or another, every sinner struggles. As the Lord Jesus warns today, Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. Overcharged, overwhelmed, so overcome that we start thinking of this world. It could be worse. Of your pains and losses, well, isn't that just how life is? The kind of self-deception that keeps you in situations you know are only getting worse, but it'll turn around, it has to. That draws you back to friends you know aren't good for you, yet they're the ones who help you forget what you'd rather not think about that allows you to see most days we live in what the Bible calls a crooked and perverse generation, that allows you to see most days as pretty good. Such magical thinking might get you through the moment or the day. But in essence, a spiritual form of that Stockholm Syndrome. For the Word of God reveals that in this scenario, the sinner is held captive by the devil, and our minds captivated by a world that actually seeks to do you harm. It takes an intervention to shake someone out of such delusion. We all know someone, perhaps a few people, <clears throat> in need of a good wake-up call. But a close inspection of our own personal opinions of this life in sin, in comparison to how God describes it, reveals us all to be in such need of rescue. Which is why the Lord so pleads with you today. Watch therefore and pray always 
that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. Which begs the question, when the Son of Man comes, will you welcome the help? Or will you rather defend a, a life of sin? Speak well of your captor, like the hostages of Stockholm did, as we by our conduct seem to claim that it's not all so bad, as the Bible says. Well, if any of those questions give your heart pause, praise be to God who through his law so wakes you up, snaps us out of our delusion, that you might lift up your head, look to him and pray, Savior of the nations, come. Virgin Son, make here thy home. Dear Christians, your God, he who looks down from above, he has watched this sad standoff of ours play out from the start, from the fall of our first parents up through your life in a veil of tears today. And although he has been patient and long-suffering, there was one demand of your captor, the devil, he could not tolerate. That demand of the devil that he take you, his hostage, along with him to his final destination, hell. So left with no other choice, your God went stealth, sending his son to rescue you in the most sneaky of ways. Marvel now, O heaven and earth, that the Lord chose such a birth. Coming to rescue you through the unassuming, disarming story of a baby born in a manger of God incarnate in such humble form that there might be no doubt he came not as some enemy, but as your true and only hope. Wondrous birth, O wondrous child, <clears throat> of the virgin undefiled, still to be in heaven enthroned, though by all the world disowned. By the world disowned indeed, for the sure sign of this our Stockholm Syndrome is the world's outright rejection of the Savior's help. As our modern age spouts forth that society's real problem is church, that the Bible keeps you from living your life to the fullest. That the real oppressor is the Jesus we preach. Oh, how our minds struggle the same. That when you sin, you should try and hide it from others. Maybe God too. That petty arguments or differences of opinion with fellow sinners are good reasons to quit showing up to church. That when you realize life really is that bad, it must be God's fault. But since he knows this, our self-deception, that's why he came to save you the way he did. That unsuspecting and a bit of surprise 
you'd find in this gospel message how he has already done it all. Commending his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Taking you unwittingly along with him to his cross by taking without your permission your sins to be his own. God's answer being a hostage exchange. As Jesus took your place nailed to planks of wood, meeting your captor's vile demand that someone suffer so that by Christ's victory over the grave that devil would be left bound in chains powerless his threats of no effect all to steal your soul from the condemnation it deserves to tear your mind free from this world's deceptions and lead you to eternal safety. From the Father forth he came and returneth to the same, captive leading death and hell. High the song of triumph swell. As the Psalms laud your risen and exalted Lord, thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive, taking you captive in that by his blood and merit you now belong to him, showering you with the gifts of forgiveness and salvation in his name, dwelling among us through his word, that we who were once found of unsound mind and rebellious in sin might now live forever with him. Thou, the Father's only Son, hast o'er sin the victory won. Boundless shall thy kingdom be. When shall we its glory see? Soon, dear faithful, soon. Stockholm Syndrome is a real thing. And something from which we all suffer. But this gospel reveals a reality far more glorious, far more comforting than any fantasy of the mind. It takes an intervention on God's part to wake us out of our self-deception. Like those hostages so suspicious of the police we have not always welcomed his help. And when this world does its worst, our minds fall back to the old standby of doubt. But since it is your God's desire for all sinners to, as he puts it, come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, he proves himself the faithful one by continuing to send his word into our midst. That your mind would no longer be held captive by a world that seeks to hurt you, but captivated by faith in him, faith in the gospel of Jesus who came to save. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape Lift up your heads, watch in repentance and faith, keep in his word, and hear him coming. His help is good. He's coming for you to set you free. Amen.
Now the peace that passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.